The light and dark bottle method is a way of measuring primary productivity in an aquatic ecosystem. In pretty much all natural waters, like oceans, lakes and rivers, there are tiny microorganisms called phytoplankton carrying out photosynthesis, fueling aquatic food webs. Remember that gross primary productivity is the rate at which solar energy is converted into chemical energy by producers. Those producers may be trees, phytoplankton, anything that carries out photosynthesis. The net primary productivity is the rate at which energy is stored as biomass by producers. NPP is just the GPP after accounting for the amount of that chemical energy that has been used for respiration. Mathematically, NPP equals GPP minus R. Understanding this is crucial for this experiment, and if you're at all shaky on your knowledge of this, go back over and watch my previous video that describes it in detail. Notice also that oxygen is produced in proportion to glucose production in photosynthesis. The light and dark bottle method involves measuring changes in dissolved oxygen levels. Oxygen is a product of photosynthesis, but also a reactant in respiration. In photosynthesis, oxygen levels rise in proportion to glucose production, and it's the chemical energy in the form of carbon compounds, i.e. glucose, that we're really trying to determine. Of course, in respiration, the use of oxygen is proportional to the use of carbon compounds. So, if I know the changes in oxygen levels, I can work out the changes in glucose or biomass levels. Picture a sealed one litre sample of water with lots of photosynthesizing phytoplankton. At the beginning, there is already oxygen dissolved in the water. We can measure it using a dissolved oxygen meter. Let's say there is 7 milligrams of oxygen per litre to begin with. After 24 hours, as a result of photosynthesis, the oxygen level rises. Perhaps 5 milligrams of oxygen is produced, theoretically totaling 12. But if we measured the oxygen level in the bottle, we would not measure 12 milligrams of oxygen per litre. We may measure a value more like 9 milligrams per litre. This is because the phytoplankton also carry out respiration with some of the oxygen. Here, we assume that 3 milligrams of oxygen per litre has been used in respiration. The measured change in oxygen level over time, in this case 2 mg per litre, is proportional to the rate of biomass stored by phytoplankton, or in other words, the net primary productivity. So determining NPP is relatively simple. We just need to measure the dissolved oxygen levels before and after a given amount of time. But how do we go about measuring the losses due to respiration? We know the respiratory losses in this bottle are 3 mg of oxygen per litre over 24 hours because I said it was in this example that I made up, but I would have no way of actually measuring this if this were a real bottle exposed to light carrying out photosynthesis. Well, the solution is quite simple. I need to replicate this setup with a second bottle, but somehow allow respiration to occur and prevent photosynthesis occurring. To do that, I just need to cover the second bottle so that no light can reach the phytoplankton, making photosynthesis impossible. I can measure the increase in oxygen level in the light bottle, and also the decrease, due only to respiration, in the dark bottle. From this, I would have a measure of the change in oxygen levels over one day, resulting from a combination of photosynthesis and respiration, which is proportional to NPP. And I know the respiratory losses. And by adding these together, I'd know the total oxygen production prior to respiratory losses, a value which is proportional to GPP. Let me walk you through doing this for real and pull the ideas together. Take two samples of water from your sample site. One bottle should be transparent, the other should be covered. Mine here has been spray painted black, but covering it with something opaque will also work. As soon as you take the samples, Measure the dissolved oxygen level with the dissolved oxygen meter. This water has a level of 9.1 milligrams of oxygen per litre. This oxygen level we'll call initial. You only need to do this measurement for one of them because they should logically have the same oxygen levels if they came from the same place. 
Next, seal them airtight so that no gases can enter or exit the bottles. This means that any changes in gas levels are only the result of photosynthesis and respiration within the bottles and not from gases entering or exiting the systems. Next, you need to leave the bottles for a while so the phytoplankton can do their thing. Ideally, you should keep the bottles in the environment you took them from. This means the temperature and light intensity the bottles are exposed to match the true conditions of the ecosystem you're testing. This is called in situ incubation. Alternatively, if it's not feasible to keep the samples in the water body you took them from, you can incubate them in the lab. This is known as in vitro incubation. At the very least, just keeping them in a place exposed to light will give data you can practice with, though the results might not quite reflect the true productivity in the ecosystem you sampled the water from. Wherever you keep them, keep them in place for exactly 24 hours. After the time has passed, open the first bottle and record the new dissolved oxygen level. Here we've got 12.2 milligrams of oxygen per litre. We'll call this value light, since it's from the bottle exposed to sunlight. Next, do the same for the dark bottle. Here we've got 7.8 milligrams of oxygen per litre. We'll call this value dark. So we had an initial oxygen level in the bottles of 9.1. Oxygen was produced by photosynthesis, but also used by respiration, and we've measured 12.2. So the change, 3.1 milligrams of oxygen per litre per 24 hours, reflects the net primary productivity. As you can see, NPP is the light bottle value minus the initial. The dark bottle started off at 9.1, but dropped to 7.8. No oxygen was produced because there was no light for photosynthesis, but the decrease of 1.3 milligrams of oxygen per litre per 24 hours is due to respiration. The respiratory losses are simply the initial bottle value minus the dark one. So we know that an amount of oxygen was produced in the light bottle by photosynthesis. And we know that some of that oxygen was used in respiration. We also know from the dark bottle that that amount used for respiration was 1.3. So we can infer that the total rate of oxygen production was 1.3 plus 3.1, which is 4.4 milligrams of oxygen per litre per 24 hours. This final value reflects our gross primary productivity, and the easiest way to calculate that is the light bottle value minus the dark bottle value. Remember that primary productivity is the conversion of solar energy into chemical energy in the form of carbon compounds, so it would usually be expressed in terms of carbon compound formation rather than oxygen formation. In photosynthesis, there are 0.375 units of carbon produced for every one unit of oxygen. So to convert milligrams of oxygen per litre per day into milligrams of carbon per litre per day, we need to multiply our values by 0.375. So here are the results for this ecosystem.